Hi, so in this video, I'm going to give you an introduction to a Poisson distribution. But what is a Poisson distribution? Well, it's defined as the probability distribution of a number of occurrences, which we call X, of some random event in a given interval of time or space, and it has the following conditions. The events must occur randomly, they must occur independently of each other, and the mean number of events must be the same within the same interval of time or space. And this symbol here is lambda, and this represents the mean. So here we have a couple of real-life examples. So a number of telephone calls to a call center between 11.50 and 12 p.m. on a Tuesday. So we could use a Poisson distribution because the number of occurrences would be the number of telephone calls. The interval of time or space would be the time between 11.50 and 12 on a Tuesday. The events would occur randomly and independently of each other, and you would expect the mean of events to be the same within this time of 11.50 till 12 on a Tuesday. Okay. Another example, the number of floors per square metre of fabric. Well, the number of currencies would be the number of floors. The interval of time or space would be the floors per square metre of fabric. They would be random and independent of each other, and you would expect the mean number of events to be the same within any square metre of fabric. Okay? So these are the conditions for our Poisson distribution. If we do have a Poisson distribution, we write it as x, the random variable, is distributed with a Poisson of mean lambda. And from this model, we can calculate probabilities using this mass function here. And in this video, I'll show you how to use this. We have the probability of any observed value is equal to e to the power of minus lambda, where lambda is given in the question, times lambda to the power of x, which is the value we're given here, divided by x factorial. Okay, so let's work through a real life example. Okay, so in example one, we're told if there are, on average, six recordable accidents that occur independently of each other in a factory every year, we're asked to find the probability that in a given year, exactly three recordable accidents occurred. So first of all, we need to define our model. We're saying that x is distributed with a Poisson model of average six, and this six is given here, okay? But now we need to define what x is. So we say, let x be the random variable, the number of recordable accidents in a year. Okay, so now we've defined what x is, we can work out the probability. We'll say the probability of our random variable equaling 3 is equal to e to the power of minus lambda, and lambda is given as 6, multiplied by lambda, 6, to the power of x, which is given in the question as 3, divided by 3 factorial. So on a calculator, we have our fraction. We write e to the power of minus 6, multiplied by 6 to the power of 3, divided by 3 factorial. And this is 0 0.0892 to four decimal places. So and this is just under 9% chance of us getting exactly three recordable accidents in a factory in any given year. Okay, so for question B, we're asked to find the probability that in a given year, exactly four recordable accidents occurred. So we say the probability of our random variable equaling four is equal to, we can use our mass function, e to the power of minus six, multiplied by 6 to the power of 4 now, divided by 4 factorial. And again, on our calculator, we have a fraction, e to the power of minus 6, multiplied by 6 to the power of 4, divided by 4 factorial, which is 0.1339 to 4 decimal places. So just 
over a 13% chance of four recordable accidents in any given year. Okay, let's try example two. So in example two, we're told that X is distributed with a Poisson model with an average of three. And we want to work out the probability of X equaling two. So this will be e to the power of minus lambda, which is now three, multiplied by three to the power of X, which is two, over two factorial. Now again, on the calculator, so we have e to the power of minus three multiplied by three squared over two factorial, which is 0 0.224 to three decimal places. For example, B, now we're asked to work out the probability of X being greater than zero, okay? So if we look at the number of possible occurrences, we could have zero occurrences or one or two or three, and this could go on forever. But what we want is X to be greater than zero. So we want all of these here. I'll just draw a box around them. Well, if it is certain that we will get a number of occurrences or zero occurrences, then we can work out the probability of X being greater than zero as certain, one, minus the probability of X equaling zero. So we're taking away this one here. So now, to work out the probability of x equaling 0, we have our mass function, e to the minus 3, multiplied by 3 to the 0, over 0 factorial. Or we can simplify this, because 3 to the 0 is 1, as is 0 factorial. So what we're left with is e to the minus 3. So to work out the probability of x being greater than 0, we can have 1 minus e to the minus 3, which is 0 0.9502. Okay, let's try question C. Okay, so for question C, we want to work out the probability of x being less than 2. So this could be either x is equal to 0 or x is equal to 1. And because it's less than 2, it could be either of them, so we'll add them together. So going back to our mass function, e to the power of minus 3 multiplied by 3 to the power of 0 over 0 factorial, add e to the minus 3, lots of 3 to the 1 over 1 factorial. Now we can simplify this. 3 to the 0 is 1. 3 to the 1 is 3. 1 factorial is 1. And 0 factorial is 1. So what we have is e to the minus 3 plus 3 lots of e to the minus 3. So we have 4e to the power of minus 3. And on our calculator, 4e to the power of minus 3 gives us 0 0.1991 to 4 decimal places. Okay, thank you very much for watching, and I hope you found that useful. Thanks again, and take care.